Why are so many states trying to pass social media safety legislation? This is Common Sense Explains. Hi everyone, I am Lorena Taboas. Social media platforms are navigating a rapidly changing landscape. Lawmakers across the U.S. are considering dozens of bills that give kids a lot more protections online. Irene Lee is Common Sense Media's policy counsel and has been tracking these state bills. Hi, Irene. Hi, Lorena. So what do you think is driving all this momentum to protect kids online? I think there are two main things driving this momentum. The first being that in 2021, we saw that U.S. Surgeon General Vivek Murphy issued a youth mental health advisory and said that kids and teens are facing a mental health crisis in our country right now and are still facing incredibly high levels of depression and anxiety today. And social media is not the only cause, but it's certainly a big contributor. Um, and I would say the second main second main thing driving the momentum is the Facebook files and Facebook whistleblower Francis Haugen's testimony about how Facebook and Instagram knew how their platforms were affecting kids and teens' mental health. And this was really a turning point that led Congress to hold several hearings on how kids and teens are being harmed online and put this issue center stage. So these bills lay out some very specific harms that kids are experiencing online. What exactly are those harms? Yeah, so these bills try to address a couple of different harms, the first being privacy harms. So tech companies are collecting billions of data points on users, um, including minors that they use to build a profile on you and then target you with customized ads or content rec recommendations in an effort to engage you. And this profiling and targeting can be harmful for people of all ages, but especially for kids and teens whose brains are still developing and maturing. And so they're just not as capable yet of defending against such advertising. And then these targeted ads can also lead kids to unhealthy habits, like exposing them to things like vaping and gambling and drinking. Um, another harm is the algorithmic recommend amplification of harmful content. So algorithms on a lot of these online platforms can lead young users down dark rabbit holes where they're exposed to content that promotes harmful things like eating disorders, self-harm, suicidal ideation, and dangerous physical challenges like the blackout challenge. Um, unfortunately, another harm is also sexual exploitation. We've seen that an alarming number of minors have reported sexual encounters with adults online, and many of them have been coerced into um, producing child sexual abuse material. Um, and the last harm is compulsive usage and addiction. So a lot of times these online platforms utilize manipulative design features like endless scroll, autoplay, push notifications that keep users glued to the platform and make it really difficult for them to get and try to stay off those platforms. So like I mentioned, there are bills to address those harms. They're being considered all across the country, California, Maryland, New Jersey. There was just a bill signing in Utah. What do these bills all have in common? Yeah, I'd say a lot of the state bills that we're seeing um, that we support fall into two categories, the first being platform liability bills, and then the sec second one being platform design bills. So the platform liability bills are trying to hold social media companies legally liable for when they design their platforms in a way that they know is addicting kids. And so we just saw this month that Utah passed a liability bill, HB 311. But this year, um, we also saw that California introduced a similar bill as well as New Jersey. So in addition to addiction, the California bill is unique because it would also hold platforms accountable for knowingly or negligently causing children to receive content that facilitates purchase of fentanyl or to develop eating disorders or engage in self-harm. And then the second type of bill um, are platform design, also called the design code bills. Um, and these essentially require companies to be designing their platforms in a way that's safer for kids and better for their well-being, rather than prioritizing their own engagements and profits first. So they'd have to be um, performing a data protection impact assessment to determine whether their platform is harming kids, such as how they're using kids' data to be targeting them, and then determine what they can be doing to eliminate or mitigate that harm so more kids will not be um, hurt when they're online. So those design code bills were actually inspired by a law that is in effect in the United Kingdom. But how effective has that UK Children's Code been in this past year? Let me explain. The UK Children's Code was fully rolled out in September 2021. The law requires online services, including websites, apps and games to provide better privacy protections for kids, ensuring their personal data is protected within the digital world. 
Since the law took effect, it has prompted changes by various social media platforms. Meta has limited targeted ads to minors, YouTube has turned off autoplay by default, and Google has expanded safeguards to prohibit age-sensitive content. The code has also had an international effect, inspiring reviews of children's privacy protections in California, Europe, and Australia. So Irene, the California Age Appropriate Design Code Act was inspired by the UK's Children Code. What exactly is this new law going to do for kids in California? So kids in California will have a new level of privacy protections online that they just don't have now. The most notable thing is the law requires minors' privacy settings to be the strongest by default. And so this means that parents and their kids don't have to be going through the dozens, maybe even the hundreds of different apps that they're using um, and trying to individually go and navigate the privacy settings of each app just because they want their kids' data protected um, and not share with various companies. Um, and also companies would be prohibited from engaging in certain practices that puts kids' privacy and well-being at risk. So for example, they cannot be tracking um, children's precise geolocation de uh, by default, and they cannot profile them unless they're, um, it's necessary to make the service function. So we're seeing a ton of momentum in the States. I mean, some of these bills have already become law. We're hoping more of them are going to be signed into law. But what exactly is happening at the federal level? We should be expecting to see Congress reintroduce um, many of the bipartisan bills we saw last year. So on the House side, we'll likely see the American Data Privacy Protection Act reintroduced, um, and that's a comprehensive privacy bill that protects all consumers' data, um, but including that of kids and teens. And then on the Senate side, we'll likely see um, the reintroduction of the Children and Teens Privacy Protection Act, it's also called COPPA 2.0, um, and the Kids Online Safety Act, which addresses platform design and safety. So we certainly hope to see that these federal get bills get passed this year so that all kids and teens can be protected online no matter what state they live in. But until then, passing more state bills like these platform liability and design code bills would be really essential to helping ensure that kids and teens in as many states as possible can be protected when they go online. We're hoping more states and maybe even Congress is inspired by all of this action. Thanks so much, Irene, for tracking all these bills for us. I know it is a ton of work and we invite all of you to sign up for our advocacy newsletter to keep track of all this legislation. That link is in our episode description. Until next time.